Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, I'm Father Andy McQuarrie, Associate Rector at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Salem, Oregon, and uh, this is my little prayer space in the basement of my home. Normally on Wednesday evenings we would be gathering in our beautiful chapel for a Celtic-inspired healing Eucharist, but because of current circumstances, we're not going to be able to do that for a little while. So this is my attempt at trying to keep our practice of community prayer and praise with special intention for healing in the world going. This is my first attempt at something like this, so I hope you'll bear with me. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're well. St. Paul's people, I miss you so much. You are daily in my prayers, and I cannot wait for the day when we can all worship together again as the parish of St. Paul's. Today is actually a major holiday in the church. This is the Feast of the Annunciation, the day when we remember the story of the Archangel Gabriel appearing to the Blessed Virgin Mary and announcing that she is about to become the mother of the Son of God. Let's pray, shall we? The Collect for the Day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Pour your grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So the story of the Annunciation is found in the Gospel of Luke. Mary, a young Jewish woman, is alone in her room when suddenly an angel of the Lord appears with this momentous news that will change the course of history. But I'd like to focus on that moment actually just before the angel appeared. Mary is alone in her room. I think a lot of us can relate right now, and Mary lived in a very difficult time in history. I am imagining that she was wondering, where are you, God? Why are you not acting? Why are we left without answers? Why are we left in the midst of so much suffering and injustice? Where are you? What is the meaning of all of this? And see, the story of the Annunciation teaches that God was at work even before we knew it. Even before the angel appeared, God was at work for healing and redemption in the world. It's interesting that right here in the middle of Lent, March 25th, nine months before Christmas, we get this holiday to point us toward Christmas. Lent is a time when we focus particularly on the darkness in the world, the darkness in ourselves. The Gospel of John reminds us that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Grateful to the wisdom and traditions of the Church to remind us in these middle days of Lent that Christmas is coming. So the world maybe feels like a dark and lonely and scary place to you right now. It does to me. And I can't make sense of this right now. I don't have an explanation for you that will make you go, oh, okay, I get it. What I can tell you is that we have the witness of Scripture that tells us that God has been at work in history in ways that were not visible, not detectable to the people who were living through that history at the time. Trust, trust in faith that God is at work in this too, for healing, for peace, for justice, and for our redemption. Peace be with you. So on Wednesdays, um, we say some beautiful prayers and we offer laying on of hands and anointing with oil, all of which are things that we, we can't do right now. 
but I found a beautiful set of prayers, a litany, um, in the uh, daily office book of the Anglican Franciscans. There's a, a series of prayers for healing. Uh, this comes to us from uh, Common Worship, which is the contemporary liturgy of the Church of England. I thought this would be good for this evening. So let us pray for healing in our world. Holy God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we make our prayer to you saying, Lord, hear us. Grant to all who seek you the assurance of your presence, your power, and your peace. Lord, hear us. Grant your healing grace to all who are sick, that they may be made whole in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, hear us. Grant to all who minister to the suffering, wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Lord, hear us. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low. Lord, hear us. Hear us, Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew all your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, rejoicing in the healing power of God's love, let's pray together in the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Peace to you, from God our Father, who hears our cry. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, whose death and resurrection brings healing. Peace from the Holy Spirit, who gives us life and strength. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen.